distant future Way down in deep 13 Dr. Forrester and TV's Frank Were hatching an evil scheme They hired a temp by the name of Mike Just a regular Joe they didn't like Their experiment needed a good test case So they caught him on the noggin and they shot him in the space Welcome to the Satellite of Love here. That's Crow. Hi. I'm Tom, and I'll get Mike. Hey, Mike! <laughs> You're just in time to read tonight's lotto numbers. Oh, Woo. I didn't know that we were going to go. Oh, oh, and uh, the first number is... 65. <laughs> Whoa, uh, 7. Seven? Oh, uh, 69. 69. Uh, we got a 12. Uh, what? We got How many of these lotto numbers do we need? Oh, Five. you need a lotto lotto numbers, oh, Mike. Okay, uh, four. <laughs> four. <laughs> four. Uh, two. Whoa. 27. <laughs> July. July. 47. Oh, we'll be right back. Oh, oh yeah. come on, Mike, you oh, missed that one. Okay, I'm your 84, baby. 48. <laughs> That is three. 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 Okay, 800. 800. And tonight's Powerball number is... Yeah. 509. 509. 509. 509. Oh, uh, Ace and No Face are calling. 509. Powerball. Oh, hi, Mike. Say, have you ever been in deep with the mob for, oh, say... 50 large? <laughs> uh, no. I don't think so. Is there a problem or something? Oh, nothing, nothing. It's just that, well... <laughs> I'm in deep to the mob for 50 large. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I'll see who... Ah! Oh, you must be here to see TV's Frank. Uh, I'll go see if TV's Frank is here. <laughs> uh, Clay? Clay? Uh, there's a Joey Skinny Legs Tagliano here to see you. Mm -hmm. Joe Skinny Legs yeah, tag to you. Did I go to high school with him? I bet that's what it is. I went to high school. Joe? Hello? Whoa, 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 oh, ah, oh, 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 I, whoa, 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 I feel kind of bad about this. Uh, I must admit I feel partly responsible. <laughs> kind of, uh, sort of. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Frank. Ah, Nelson! Awfully good evening, isn't it? Uh, naturally, one would find a gentleman such as yourself at the gaming table. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Crow. Where was it last we met? Was it Atlantic City, Monte Carlo, Grand Casino Hinkley? <laughs> You're very droll. Yes, yes, indeed, ah. Nelson. Right. What? Here comes oh. Tom Servo. Oh, gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, chums. The house extended me a $100,000 line of credit to, you know, and I always like to show the proper gratitude. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Well, let the uh, games begin, Ooh, hey, uh, gentlemen. Yes, 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 yes. B-37, B-37. <laughs> ah, you too. Oh, congratulations, yes, Mr. Nelson. Yeah. But, as they say, the night is still young. What? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. There, there, Dr. F. There, there. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, 
Your movie today, your movie is uh, Red Zone Cuba, but first uh, there's a short, and then if Dr. Forrester lives through this, he's going to beat the living crap. <laughs> well, enjoy the experiment, guys. Hey, look, Dr. F, I got you something. Some nuts and some hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> Attention, 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 attention. The, buffet the buffet is now, is now being served. The buffet! You get a clear out of here! Don't come in! Speech! Speech! Speech. <laughs> hey, posture pals was the definitive last word on posture. Did ancient Toastmasters make this film? <laughs> Professor Bueller's day off. <laughs> there were a lot of forensics going on in Kansas in the 50s. The ear is the human organ the public speaker is most likely to try to impress as he makes a speech. After the human nipple. But did you ever think of the importance of the eye? The importance of what the listener sees as well as hears? The eyes of Kenneth Mars. Now just suppose you were a beautiful doll with rosy cheeks and big blue eyes. Okay. Uh, a doll that never talks. I'll just do what he says. Or a tree that basked in the warm sunshine and rustled in the breeze. A tree that never spoke. Now you're a can opener, metal and shiny and taciturn. Or suppose you were a spring flower, contrasting your gay colors with the blue sky. I'm not a flower. You know how you would be judged? You'd be judged mostly by your appearance, by the way you look. By the kind of car you drive. Appearance is the basis upon which a little girl chooses a new doll. I like this one because it's whiter. <laughs> a man's prosperity is often judged by the appearance of his home, and thus is man himself judged. Yes, that's Eisenhower's America. Yes, appearance is important. There, I said it. I'd say it again if I had to. Mm -hmm. Appearance is a powerful factor. I learned that the hard and way. Appearance is something you can control. Remember, appearance has a pair in it. In public speaking, your appearance may make the difference between a good speech and a poor one. Your appearance may help convince your audience you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Or it may convince them you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, of course, I don't know what I'm talking about. A good appearance is something that everyone should strive for, oh. something everyone can accomplish. Uh, let me just get my notes here. I know I had something else. It begins with the feet. Mm -hmm. Seems strange, but having your shoes shined will help you make a better speech. Mm. It will help your general appearance and make you feel better. Plus, the polish gets you high. Then you should have your suit cleaned and pressed just for your talk. This will help you look successful. Hey, honey, you're supposed to take the paper off. Be sure to wear a clean shirt. Be sure to get a brand new chin. And your favorite tie. Now you're ready to rub out Sonny Corleone. Be sure your hair is neat and clean, and you're all ready to go. Make sure your part is gouged into your skull. <laughs> Yes, sir, you're all dressed up and you're ready to go. You feel great, but wait a minute. There's a lot more to appearance than just having your necktie straight, your hair combed and your teeth brushed. The most important one element of your appearance is your posture. Not that it helps this guy, any. <laughs> your posture may be more convincing to your audience than the words you say to them. Depending upon your posture, this can be good or bad. Because your audience subconsciously judges you as much by what they see as what they hear you say. And they'll see you before they hear you. <coughs> the effectiveness of a brilliant speech oh, can be greatly diminished oh, by poor posture. <coughs> Why? Because we like you. Because your audience thinks about what they see as well as what they hear. It's the village of the damned. If your posture is poor, your audience thinks, this poor fellow isn't sharp. He's weary and confused. He doesn't care about us, and he probably doesn't know what he's talking about. And you, you are puzzled. Why has your speech failed? Uh, ever seen a one-eared elephant? Mister, you don't look good, that's why. 
What your audience sees is so bad, they can't hear what you're saying. He's got Patty Duke's dad in his contact lens. Now, good platform posture can be accomplished by anyone with a little effort and concentration. Good posture is first a physical matter. The body should be held erect and tall with the head up. Secondly, good posture is a matter of the mind, your mind. In your thinking, you must convince yourself you will think tall, talk tall, Stand tall and walk tall. Shave tall, jump tall, and crouch tall. <laughs> Remember that you must think tall, mm -hmm. talk tall, stand tall, yeah, yeah. and walk tall. This will help you with your posture and your speech. What if you're Robert Reich? No. Now, good posture serves more of a purpose than just making you look better. It helps you to be comfortable because it keeps you well balanced on the platform. America first! Poor balance, along with poor posture, causes some of the characteristic types of speakers you have seen. This type knows his subject and has good control of his voice. But look at him. He looks almost too tired to stand up. Women be different than men. Word. He balances first on one leg, then on the other. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's really very good. <laughs> He's the tired farm horse type. She's an energetic city girl. Can they get along in the suburbs? Then there's Miss Prim, the speaker who stands straight, tall, and rigid. She seems to be afraid she'll break, and she looks frightened and excessively formal. And yet startlingly erotic. <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely? She keeps her feet clamped tightly together. Enough said. We know her as the telephone pole type. <laughs> Next, we have the He-Man athletic type. Grandpa? You haven't seen him. He stands with his shoulders back and his stomach out and his feet wide apart. He looks undignified, and soon his awkward posture tires him. He'll do, And he Jay. rocks back and forth for relief. The lion senses his weakness and claws in, chewing at his hamstrings. <coughs> He's the rocking horse type. She's a straight-back chair type. Can they get along? <laughs> Lastly, we come to the type who leans. He leans on the table, back of a chair, or anything handy. In trying to be nonchalant and at ease, he makes himself thoroughly uncomfortable. The belching doesn't help either. Yeah, plus, he's leaning on the people in the front row. He is the turtle type. Mm -hmm. All four common types look awkward, partially because they're off balance. Good balance results from having the bodily weight well distributed on both feet and in having the feet just the right distance apart for comfort. You can determine this distance by making the knee test. I will not make the knee test. <laughs> Place the palms of your hands on both knees. Wait, I'm kidding. Make an easy circular motion with the hands and knees. Until you're incredibly turned on. If your feet are the correct distance apart, the weight will be evenly distributed as you change position. You'll be well balanced and comfortable. You'll look poised and dignified. Uh, no you won't. With your feet too far apart, you'll have difficulty in standing up. Because <laughs> you're off balance, you may fall either forward or backward. Don't do this during the speech. With your feet too close together, you're still off balance and you're uncomfortable. That's fine. Security! That's really nice. Security! Uh, is your speech over, Mr. Johnson? Uh, good. Tread until you find the easiest and most comfortable position. Then note the location of your feet. Yeah, that's it, baby. Shake that moneymaker! Always try to keep your feet in this position when you are speaking. And you won't have to worry about balance. And with good balance, You've conquered another phase of good appearance. Now remember that appearance is important. You must appear, and you must have matter. And that good appearance is easily accomplished. Except by Denny Dillon. Just remember to think tall, mm -hmm. talk tall, ah, stand tall, mm -hmm. and walk tall, and to achieve good balance. Mm -hmm. For good posture and appearance will greatly increase your ability as a speaker and a leader. And remember to always leave your area at home. My posture is good! Ah! 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 Oh, no, cut, no, do it again. Well, this is a sunny opening. Mm -hmm. This is Lutheran Pacific Railroad. Hmm. To get a good job, get a good education. Um, hello? 
Do you have a brunch? John Carradine. Was he always a hundred years old? Mm -hmm. John Carradine for Viceroy. Sal Minio for Viceroy. <laughs> I'll keep walking and eventually they'll stop filming. John really fills out a pair of overall, doesn't he? Hmm. Station is really bustling this time of day. <laughs> oh. Mr. Wilson? That's right. What can I do for you, young man? My name's Jim Benton, from the Gazette. I'm doing a follow-up story yes. on the desperados that were through here in 61. Ah, yes. Which century? I remember those men. Griffin, Cook, and Landis. I believe you were engineer on the train they grabbed that night. Yeah, that's right. You were too Charlie, which I was making a run out of Albuquerque. That was in 61. Then I joined the crash test dummies. Did you happen to see the men in the yards that night, sir? No, at least not close enough to recognize them. As I pulled out of the yards that night, I remember looking back for the conductor's signal. I saw some men running. It was dark. <laughs> yes, sir. That's not enough? <laughs> it seems like a long time ago. Kid looks like a reporter from the Catholic Digest. Griffin. John makes Keith Richards look dewy. He ran all the way to hell. Oh, there's always a stop in Wausau. How's that fit, you fancy pants? <laughs> the red zone is for Cuba and un-Cuba only. You know, I've got an oily Cuba zone. <laughs> Coleman Francis is Curly <laughs> Howard in The Fugitive. Oh, he's good in anything. Mm -hmm. It's that music. What the? Oh, I'm being filmed. Oh. <laughs> this was just after he was drained of life by the succubus. I trained to Mundo Pina. Well, they don't call John Kennedy the voice for nothing. To the end. Oh, to be blessed with an instrument like running that. Running mm. hard and running fast. To meet my future and away from my past. Taking the gamble that cannot last. Night train to the end. God, he's trying to sneak into China. <laughs> Elves ride to Mundo Pina. Hell's ride to the end. Oh, now I'm rocking. My soul to the devil's bend. Okay. Draws me hard with a merciless hand. And all I bought is a handful of sand. Night train to the end. Whoops, there we go again. Night train to the end. Jesus, the escape route is used a lot. <laughs> There's all the malt cups from his previous takes. <laughs> Take it. Get down now, boogeyman. Whoa. Play that funky music. Drink, night, train, go to the basketball game, throw up under the bleachers. Moe's gonna kill me. <laughs> okay. We join our story already in progress. <laughs> Lord be with you. Danger to tire without a license, huh? Move back. Near you. You look good. Been working out? What's your name? Cook. All right, stand back there, Cook. There'll be no tire change in my county, mister. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Landis. Where are you going? Looking for work. We follow the harvest. Crossroads up north, we're heading south. No what's to be found nowhere, officer. You seen anyone around here? Uh, the field, maybe? No, we ain't, officer. I'll have to run you through the computer. Well, I would if I had one. Crap, I'm locked out of my car. Crotch cops. This is my Agent, country. All cars report the three forks immediately. What did we do? Boy, he's nothing if not thorough. All right, get that truck out of here. I'll run you both in. Ah, so it's martial law in rats-ass Missouri. 
to see what happened. Get out of my way. Well, well you were the one who had to stop you. I don't know why you had to stop me. Get out of my house. Just gotta get this thing out and then we'll shut up. No. Damn tire changers! Sometimes walking the dog just isn't that relaxing. Well, Tony Curtis and Sidney Poitier are in there already. You know, this movie can't decide if it's lighthearted comedy or gripping drama. It's not such a stone, my area! Oh, hold on! Oh, thanks, now I'm barren! <laughs> You! It smells like Coleman Francis in here. Oh, I'm tired. Been a long day. <laughs> Running down the road, trying to loosen my load. I got Coleman Francis on my mind. Well, this film wastes no precious screen time with a plot. <laughs> hmm. Oh! Yeah. Well, this film is moving along quite briskly. How's your pasta? Well, look who's finally up. We really enjoy our progressive dinners. Do I just seat myself then? Ugh, were you saving a specimen? <laughs> no need for that gun. Sit down. Have some coffee. <laughs> Few beans left. No need to make a fuss. Oh, Peshaw, there's always too many beans. <laughs> I thought I heard something in the back of that truck last night. But I was too lazy to turn my head and look. You know, thanks, boys. I really shouldn't, but... Oh, what the heck, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Fresh ground pepper, sir. My name's Cook. Landis. We've been up the river. That's my little joke. You sure fooled that bull last night. He must have been right by his car. What'd you do? Grab our tailgate when we drove off? Me and Landis got busted back in 58. Liquor store. Two years of hard labor. Dollar grabbing a job anywhere we find it. No more iron cages. <laughs> Sorry I blew up like that. Coffee? And thus a solid friendship is born. Oh, that's mighty good beet juice. Oh. This is a hazelnut Sumatra blend. I think you'll like it. Anyone for tiramisu? <laughs> oh no, the lunch rush. Oh, my ride's here. Gotta get my purse. Hi, I brought your new script pages. Buford Pusser, Walking Dance. You boys just drive down from the north? Think, damn it. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Didn't happen to see a big fella, about 200 pounds, maybe, hitchhiking? No, sir, we didn't. Uh-huh. Do you provide a service of some sort? Huh? All right, boys. All right. Well, damn, he's good. Or uh, just in case you do, his name is Griffin, and the reward is five thousand dollars. He's over there, right there, right in the bush. Griffin, old oh, kid, you. Yeah. Well, kill you, yes. Kill again. He's a regular Mycroft Holmes. Uh, let me just hoist my large ass in here. Uh, well, once uh, we get past the character development, this film's bound to pick up. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you chaps, but I'm still in the mood for some action. Ah, well then, some high-stakes pull taps, perhaps? Ooh, mm, I'm that. getting a rush already. Yes, yes. Why don't we check on Dr. Forrester, okay? Oh, all right. If you say so. So it's come to this, huh? 
<laughs> Are you just going to lie there like a big lump feeling sorry for yourself? Is that it? <laughs> Are you going to let a couple of scratch and bruises turn you into a self-pitying sissy pants? Well, are you? Are you? Look at me when I'm speaking to you. I don't believe this. I'm very, very disappointed. The old Clayton Forrester wasn't like this at all. He didn't know the meaning of the word quit. He didn't have it in him. The old Dr. Clayton Forrester would have thrown off these covers. He would have pulled himself up. He would have pulled his twisted knees over and stood himself up on his own two cast. That's the Dr. Clayton Forrester that I know. But oh, that posture. Here. Oh, there. Okay, let's have at it. Let's go. Come on. No. Oh, man. I can hardly stand to watch. Yeah, I know. His posture is really terrible. The worst. Yeah, poor Frank's got his work cut out for him, that's yeah, for sure. We'll be right back. His posture's well, terrible. I can mean it. Well, <laughs> he didn't say anything. Nothing happened. You got it all wrong. You just made out for a while. You were wonderful. Boy, never before has the screen been so electrified. Why, you were wonderful. We lead a rich life. That kind of money's worth joining up for. They give you a thousand bucks to join, and a thousand bucks when it's over. That's at least a thousand bucks. Maybe it won't be over. Oh, you're deep, Tony. Real deep. Once we get that money in our hands, we'll grab a long freight train. Turkey check. Hey, wait! We didn't finish reading the sign. U.S. Air needs to update a bit. Suddenly, it's the best years of our lives. <laughs> Buddy Hackett! Hmm. Uh, there will be a five-hour delay in our movie, so please stand by. We'll have the mechanics take a look at it, and meanwhile, we'll have to ask you to board another movie. <laughs> he did it again. You'd think they'd be onto him by now. Ah, another Hollywood pretty boy. <laughs> Take a long second and get used to this face. Cherokee Jack? Yeah, I'm Cherokee Jack. <laughs> Do you know where they train men to fight down in Cuba? Yeah, I know where they train. How much supplies to the training camp? Fifteen dollars each. We're about busted. What'll you give us for the truck? Run good? Throw in the guy? Oh, let's look at it. I'm Cherokee Jack. Oh no, you ran over my dog. Thirty-five dollars. Mm, Twelve thousand. Thirty-five dollars? That's the best I can do, boys. Well, that's not too bad. <laughs> How about our friend? <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, boys. You give me the truck, I'll fly the three of you. Uh, all right, Cherokee. When can we leave? Tonight. I'm Cherokee Jack. It's Petey the Blade! Hey, Blade. Petey! Coleman Francis makes a terrific story. Well, the close-ups really save on sets. Well, most wheel feels motion. Uh, weren't they just flying? Mind if we pick up my flight instructor? I've got a few lessons left. Last known photo. Just think the tape deck alone is worth $35. It just makes me mad. We're just gonna roll there, right? Look, a soccer team. If you need any help, just press the stewardess button. My friend here can fly. Mind if I smoke? Thanks, good. I smoke then. You're sitting on my hand. It's really coming down, huh? What? Wait a minute, it's beautiful! <laughs> huh. 
Mom, they're landing in our yard. They've flown all the way from New Mexico to New Mexico. I can't handle the truth. Oh, they're here. Oh, oh God, that's over. I hope he's here to brief us on the movie. I brought you some fight men, Joe. Good, we can use them. Okay, men, follow me. I'm Cherokee Jack. Well, men, I'll fill you in on who you are, where you came from, and why you're here. Some of the hottest hinders in Hollywood. Well, the bears are acting up, so be careful and keep your campfires small. Gentlemen, we shove off in 24 hours. You shove off. Time for formality. That was an official thing I just did. Here's the lunch menu. Just check off what you want. Boy, they got a real cricket What's problem. This? Sign your names. What for? Well, headquarters can make out your checks. Is uh, X okay? We get cash. Cherokee, sir. Sign your names, please. Hey, quit by locating. Boy, look at him. He's guarding the hell out of that place. Yes, Earth Shelter Housing is the choice for guerrilla groups. Remember, guys, no girls allowed in our fort. My name's Justine. Justine? Where are you fellas from? Up north. Do you know Bob? Let's get something to eat. See you around. I think I really drew them out. You can take Salem out of the country, but ding! You can't take the country out of Salem. Ah, my first good shower in months. Could you sponge my back, Steve? I would never want to go in after Coleman. Come on, how long are you going to take in there? That should be all right. Yeah? Yeah, that's perhaps the logical spot, Justine. Sergeant Justine, I want you to call me Lieutenant Vivian. We'll hit the beach. Here. You smell great, sir. I'll have Jimmy and the three that came in tonight. Those three. You're right, I'm sorry. How much help can we expect from them? I don't know. I think we're being watched by a Winslow Homer painting. They're broke. Probably hiding from the law. Who knows? But they are coming with us. Wow. How much help? I don't know. Jose will drop the ropes here. Because it's Cuba. Alive with pleasure. Ah, they're filming in someone's basement apartment. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think that Justine guy is cute? Huh. Must be a railroad highway somewhere around here. I'd do five years to get that Cherokee's throat in my hands. Nothing I hate more than a liar. Don't worry. We'll get out of here. Well, I feel better just talking about it. Thanks, guys. Our otter, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Honey, you up? Turn down service. Come in, Chastine. Hour after hour of heart-pounding small talk. So you guys want to mess around and uh, overthrow Cuba or something? Nice evening. What can we do for you? Oh, it's getting sort of lonely. Oh, I thought it'd get some news from civilization. Arizona, maybe. Arizona, huh? Out around Globe. I have a ranch here. How'd you get caught in that? My grandparents live in Cuba. Their sugar mill was taken away. Now it's a Nutrisweet mill. Oh, I don't know. I, I figure they have a right to it. You got your first money? Cash? Afraid not. This one is on me. What does that mean? What does that mean? I'm going to try and help my grandparents get their mill back. Sounds sort of foolish, doesn't it? Nice plywood guitar. <laughs> Guess I'm a dreamer. 
Montreal. My wife, Ruby, says I'm doing it. They financed me four years of college. Figured over something. But enough of that. <laughs> ah, I know. This is the Gomer Pyle exhibit at Filmways Land. Full metal curly. I always wanted money. But I said overlook. A lot of money. If we stick together, maybe we can get money. Somewhere. Where does the pillow end and his face begin? The boys back at the joint can see me now. Ah, uh, Coleman hogged all the best lines for himself. Gotta fight for some peasants from Cuba. <laughs> but I had to finish smoking before I could find that amusing. Griffin, how did you fight it out? You never told us much about that. <laughs> Drain pipe. Dug up some dirt. Shut up, everyone. He's going to tell the dirt in the drain pipe story. I worked three long months. Griffin. Seems like I read about a Griffin once. They call him the Cotton King of the South. This film dares you to watch it. Sold a lot of cotton one day. That night, sent his trucks in and stole it right back. <laughs> he sent them up for a long stretch. Seems like a thousand years ago. His wife spent all the money and become a streetwalker. Every newspaper in the South had a picture of her. Well, that's a weird stain. Beautiful broad. Yeah, it's my incessant droning, isn't it? That's it, yeah. There. Now can we get some sleep? I'm just in a bad mood. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> May I finish my story? I think you're supposed to strangle me till I'm dead. This is gonna be hard to ignore, fella. Oh, uh, we've got the gravel pit till noon, and then the Sandinistas are scheduled. <laughs> Hey, Van Clyburn! <laughs> ah, they're at bus driver training! Hi, Cuba! <laughs> ah, Castro doesn't stand a chance! Okay, now, what we want to do here is that... Hey, where are you going? Uh, do you really need to practice jumping? <laughs> uh, all right, I'm sitting on a spike. You can't move me! <laughs> it's the Shining Path Fantasy Camp. <laughs> Les Steckle begins training camp. <laughs> I don't want to be covert anymore. We do more before noon than most people do before ten. Uh, that was very good, Jimmy. Yeah, uh, very good, Jimmy. It was nice of Mrs. Mimbach to let them use her backyard. Mm. Make it. Now is the time. We'll hide out till they shove off. You shove off. Coleman's think tank. <laughs> Let's make a run for it. <laughs> well, make a jog for it anyway. Oh! And their highly detailed plan falls apart. Wow, the revolution is highly Thank underfunded. More, Not me. Let Jimmy try his luck. Come on, Ed, roll him. Hey, where Tom Arnold lives now. <laughs> oh, they got uh, caught, and now they're forced to just hang out some more, huh? Come on, boy. Come on, treat your daddy right. We need a pair of shoes. And a hat and a purse. Yahtzee! Hey, guys. Hey, it's Fee Waybill. <laughs> you boys want to play some galloping dominoes? Whoa. You want to shoot some dice? Maybe play some freeze tag? <laughs> well, I see. Well, perhaps I'll ask again later, pal. Man, I want you to study this picture my son drew. Then we're shoving off right after sundown. You, you shove off. off. I want to give you some idea of what to expect. There's 80,000 of them and seven of us. At 12 o'clock midnight, we hit the beach. At 12.30, a patrol boat makes its nightly run. <laughs> 
We have 30 minutes to scale 80 foot cliffs and clear the beach. Ted, you take Havana. We fight if we have to. Our job is to tear down telephone lines, destroy all forms of communication, ammo dumps. We have a man in Cuba that'll throw ropes over the cliff at 12 midnight. At 12.15, we're captured. We must not get caught on the beach. Especially with my thighs. <laughs> the invasion force will follow us. They should be there at daybreak. Any questions? Yeah, are your bunkmates supposed to strangle you? Okay, men, that's it. Start getting your gear ready. Gear? Be ready to shove off right after sundown. You, you shove, shove off. off. Careful with those cigars. The Ghost Brigade. Wow, what an awesome sight. Uh -huh. A kiss on the hand, maybe. What kind of thing that? Uh, Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mike's not here. I'm Carol Channing. Be glad to bring a message to this uh, Mike, was it? Oh, I see. Oh, this movie must have really gotten to you. Mm. Poor sap. Well, it's just sensational that you're Carol Channing. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, stop that. As Carol Channing, I must say, that is very annoying. Uh, we better check on uh, Frank and Dr. F, eh? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, you do whatever you want. I'm lunching with Angela Lansbury. Uh, <laughs> Right. Uh, happy talk. Talk about the things. Oh, hi. Well, I guess it's pretty inevitable now. Basically, it's a waiting game at this point. Uh, I've decided not to employ any radical procedures. Water. Sorry, Clay. It's pretty hopeless. Mm. Been going through your mail, though. Mm. Oh, look at this. It's a card from Leo Biscalia. Mm. Hope you die, you rotten uh. best. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Frank. It's Jimmy Carter. Yes, Mr. President. Is he dead yet? I'll let you know just as soon as he dies. You do yes, that, sir, Frank. Mr. President. You call me. Just you as call soon. Me here. Okay, bye bye now. Uh, bye bye. Frank. Goodbye, yeah. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Frank. <laughs> that was nice. And look what Mother Teresa sent us. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's true. One life touches so many others. These aren't even his shoes. What the? Uh, oh, oh, movie, movie sign. sign. Oh, 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 no. That way. That way. Oh, God. <laughs> you okay, honey? Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, from the shores of Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, this is the Cuba-Bemidji border. Yes, that's really Castro. Goliath. <clears throat> well, good evening, Mr. Dewey, brother. That's Castro, you know. <laughs> it's either Castro or Stuart Margolin. <laughs> uh, my floor shams are getting muddy. <laughs> hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> A massive invasion force storms the beach. <laughs> Actually filmed on the moon. <laughs> huh? There. Ah. You know, there's steps right over by the snack bar. Howie, my army slacks are too tight and binding now. Is it a good idea to invade the Bay of Pigs again so soon after the last time? <laughs> well, maybe 25 minutes of training wasn't enough. Ooh, oh, I feel tingly. <laughs> oh, he got the bunny cliff. I had to follow the stinky guy. You kids quit invading us there. Well, we just went up this rope, but once more can't hurt. This movie has the courage to unabashedly repeat itself. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's the nerdy guy who's gonna get killed. 
the Moundsview Junior High School production of The Guns of Navarone. It's the Battle of the Network Stars. <laughs> Once all seven of them are into place, the invasion really begins. Well, I'm guessing that job at Denny's doesn't seem so bad now, does it? Coleman, I think you sat in ice cream. You know, Charo could have planned this invasion better. <laughs> Cockles and muscles, <laughs> alive, alive, all. Get real beard. <laughs> it's a leg! <gasps> oh. I saw a bobble link. The A-Team. Ah, Castro lives above a hardware store. Fortunately, Cuba has only eight guys in it. Damn leftist guerrilla drivers! Uh, huh? Well, there's way more Cuba. I thought we were done. Wow, can you imagine being Castro and seeing that force swarming up at you? Man. He's a tactical genius. That come here gesture? Brilliant! By some dreadful miscalculation, they've taken over the old course at St. Andrews. Are we there yet? I'm hungry. I feed her. I have to go potty. Just ten more minutes, boys, then it's time for dinner. <laughs> We approach County Road B with extreme caution. This is smart. They're running right up Castro's driveway. Castro's out raking leaves. <laughs> well, you know, this movie helped people work through their feelings about the Bay of Pigs. And thus the Battle of Door County raged on. Well, I'm pretty sure you're dead. They just lost a third of their force. You know, things look okay. Actually, maybe Cuba doesn't need a revolution. He's practically begging to be fragged. Mm -hmm. Ow, ow, oh, ow! Oh, Stickers, ow, oh, prickle thistles. We fought for control of the toboggan run. Hey, no fair, I slip. Keep it down, I'm trying to read in here. Also. Also? No, Coleman, don't take off your Carving pants, please. Now get me some toilet paper. The Yankees will pay highly for you, Senor Francis. Tragically, he was only looking for sand dollars. Hmm. Hey, commies are cute. Mm -hmm. Night train to drop the jeep off. <laughs> Obviously, you don't know who you've captured here. I'm Coleman Francis. Hi, I'm here to relieve Deb. Laura Petrie, revolutionary. She's the activities director for the revolution. Hmm. This place ain't so bad. They captured the Frito Bandito. He's Cuban. Oh. It's a four-star prison. Recommended by Best Leftist. <laughs> All that Patty Hearst is at it again. <laughs> Anya! For this sex shot, let's focus on me with my legs splayed and my enormous package spread out. Oh. Oh, <laughs> their lives haven't changed at all. And I say, no, it's not pine tar, it's tobacco juice. But anyway... The we have to sit so close, we got the whole cell. Hey, Tony, you bring the book of questions. Mm, shin bones cutting through my sock here. I think the phrase, ugly American, is unfair. How about you? <laughs> mm. Say, would you mind covering up your leg again? It's really... It's Mel Blanc. Oh, oh, I can never sleep during revolutions. I'm just glad Coleman's not wearing a skirt. Thank God. Stinky stank redemption. 
Honey, put your knees together, please. I'm just gonna go peek in on the girls. Uh, uh, no, no, I shouldn't. I really, I have to control. We ran away, the ocean's chasing us. <laughs> I am a Cuban, and this is my Cuban infant. I am a Cuban looking for Cuban safety here in Cuba. Bail pigs. That's what they say when I go swimming. I just can't get worked up for this war. You, know, you couldn't lose money on a Bay of Pigs film at this time. The country was Bay of Pigs crazy. I'm with you, brother. Be a pig. Right on. John Carradine is really good in this movie. Hey, it's Justine or Janine or J Jordan or whatever the hell his name is. I'm trying to die over here. <laughs> Ugh. Might as well get the lawnmower out. I think he's coming in here because of the editing, but I can't tell for sure. Oh no, he's almost in here, I think. This may be so terrifying. And, oh, no. oh. Nelson Eddy? It's Joe. Yes, it's Joe. The loons, Norman. Listen to the loons. <laughs> uh, you don't have to plant roses that deep. The longest house in Cuba, I thought you'd be interested. The bridges of Madison, Cuba. Now don't run away. That would be unfair. Stay there. Hey, you're gonna shoot me! It's Nixon. Just wait till BB hears about this. <laughs> His face was tempered Please by war. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Now I'm dying and I have paint on my face. <laughs> Oh, I've heard of this Cuban paint throwing. Never know who's next. That's what I love about this crazy place. I'll go. Juan Cruz. Hmm? Soy el Padre Gonzalez. The Cubans in this movie sound like the grown-ups on Peanuts. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. Jose. Michelle shocked. Well, I'll give you eight bucks for it. Have you seen this woman? Goes by Mary, aka the Virgin. Amen. Que Dios te salve. Thanks for playing our game today. I've never seen Curly so down. Vamos, Juan Cruz. Arthur Dimsdale. Hmm. Quit stalling and get executed. Come on. Oh, God, that scene's finally over. Oh. Um, say, I need to order a low salt, low fat last meal. That's not a problem. Okay. You want the paint in your face? That's optional. <laughs> this is a bad time to ask for a Cuba Libra? Yeah, get a load of this hangnail. Ever had one like that? Oh, my last smoke is a menthol. Yuck. Yeah, well, I suppose, huh? I wonder who they're planning on shooting. Listo. Mentos. Viva Cuba? Oh! He seems okay with this. <laughs> Missed me. Missed me. Now you have to... Kiss me. Ugh. So the rest of the movie is just watching them all get shot one by one. I may enjoy it. You know, Coleman Francis would make a really lumpy mattress. Oh, not that I... Would someone <laughs> please give me a doctor? I'm George Takai. No doctor coming here. You'll have to sweat it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Managed care at its best. Oh, for the love of Pete. Peekaboo, who's in there? Who's in there? Mm, this looks delicious. Here, let Coleman kiss it. 
the tender touch of Coleman Francis. He won't last 24 hours. Now, I've seen torn pants like that before. Can we? Coleman was pre-med. Men in prison had it. Doctor didn't get to him in time. Somebody get me some water. I'm dying in a rush. I don't know much about executions, but maybe they could shoot two at a time. I had a two guys win on break. I'm gonna solo on this one. No. Okay. They stole. Well, they actually made it a fairly challenging shot. <laughs> Got a very delicate kidney. Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well. Bye. <gasps> Curious George goes to Cuba. Hey, that's the guy who just got shot. Hey, we're next. He butted. Must be midnight. We're gonna let it all yeah. hang down. I'm gonna see that either. Wop, 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 wop. Wop, wop, wop. They yeah. change guards at midnight. And they do light gardening at midnight. This is getting to be a drag, guys. Will somebody get me some water? They shot a man at the Mexican border. Go to the window. Ask the guard if a wounded man can have some water. I think it'll be funny. If they give you some, then we have a chance to make a break. Won't give us none. They know we're all starving for water. Tell the guard he's got a fever. Go on, try it. Oh, and uh, take your time. God! It's me, Margaret. Sentry. Water! <laughs> Man got a fever. You got boogie fever. Just a couple. Well, they got a south-facing cell. That's nice. Well, I don't have any water. I've got a wonderful bullion here. I yeah, know. I just got killed. I get that a lot. I hate these prisons where you got to ask for water. Why don't they just bring it to the table? It's not without its charm. Well, hey, this has little marshmallows in it. To come out of a magician's kit, it's bottomless. Hey, he's double dipping. <laughs> Thanks, guys. The backwash really helps. Drop. Oh, I just gotta look in the girl's cabin. Uh, oh, uh, no. I have to control myself. Control. Be strong. <laughs> that water plan really went wrong. Tomorrow night at midnight, after they change guards. One guard will be out front. The other one walks around the hut. When the guard out front is alone. No, nope, nothing's sinking in. Ask him for water. Gotta work this time. Castro looks like Toulouse Lautrec. <laughs> Why'd they bring Diane Fossil? Ah, Fidel has to go potty behind a tree. Mm -hmm. We better move out now. He's here again. The extra we passed when they captured us. Can you handle one of those planes? I can handle them. I was in skydivers, you know. <laughs> Cook. That's the county Chicago. That's the guard for some water. The movie lapped if itself. It to you, I'll be at the window. Make him move in close. Well, I know you. If I can get my hands on him. I'll snap his neck. <laughs> Don't you wait for the guard chain? We've got to make it now. That is two, maybe three miles. You have to give me time to check. We need a plane that's got enough gas. Take me with you. It's about that time. That ranch I told you about has got a mountain of pitch blend. They're practically giving it away. Uranium, tungsten, diamonds maybe. Now look, you've got a busted leg and we can't carry you. I'll have it with you. I'll carry myself. What kind of a cock and bull story you land on us? I'm a bad That's boy. There's riches on my mountain. Uranium. The tension mounts. Tungsten. 
or thousands. Maybe even hundreds. I know it sounds crazy. Oh, would you choke me again? But I believe him. What you talking about, Willis? Griffin, let's go to Arizona. I was just beginning to enjoy New Mexico slash Cuba. Check the window. And ask the guard for some water. What the heck? Crazy enough to do it. He's going to check the window. Look at that big old hair grease stain they're leaving there. Ugh. Is the film grainy or are these guys just kind of green? Water. Oh. Thirsty. Sick man. Uh, things you'd say to a guard. Uh, things in a prison. Pass. Pass. I don't think he's going to buy it. <laughs> ask him again. Come on. Improvise a little. Water. Thirsty, sick man. Uh, uh, things you get from a tap. Uh, things you call your grandpa. Things. You do with, oh, move on, please. Water. Oh, no, please. I'm not a huggy person. <laughs> He's dead already, so it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Oh, the jumping training pays off. Stay corrected. <laughs> huh? <What> the... <laughs> Escape from Green Acres. Achtung! I mean, allons-y! Uh, Zutala! Oh, wait, I'm Spanish. Oh, it's daytime now. <laughs> oh, they ran into a ye old mining town. <laughs> Water. Thirsty. Sick man. It's nighttime again. And day. Night and day. Da, 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 da. The extra board will be over that. Let's go. The Bronco Nagurski gang. <laughs> yep, I'm Cuban. Huh? I mean, okay. Uh, je suis pas au uh, um, oh. Today's guard wears stylish flares. Actionlessness. <laughs> ah, whew, that wasn't that close, huh? Well, that one's okay. I'm not wild about the interior. I turned everything on. The radio, the lights. <laughs> it's a darn good thing they escaped during the Cuban Aircraft Expo. Look at him run, the little femme. <laughs> Look, peanuts aren't important. Just take one. Fortune and Pitch Blend is riding on the scene. I'm gonna put my wig on and see if that helps anything. That's good. Huh? <laughs> good work. Oh. Uh, D for drive, F must mean fly. Let's go. He's using Coleman's slipstream. Huh? Oh, please, I'm in enough trouble already. Buzzy Thurston is the fugitive. <laughs> hey, Mo, Mo. Right, go with the camera. Let's go. <laughs> Helping? No. They look cute. Well, those white walls really kind of screw up the camouflage, huh? You know, I still like this movie better than Havana. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you guys. My boss is going to be really mad. Oh. All right, Tay. Pull. 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 Ignore them, rise above it. Woo, whew. boy, that was close. They made it, though. <laughs> Next, we visit lovely bush gardens. Well, in some parts of Cuba, it was a nice day. Stay over the road and keep your eyes open. If you see anything, film it. We'll put it in. Coleman, are we still in a plane in Cuba? So it's all an elaborate plan to find a nice picnic spot. Mm. They should have tried to take over Belize or Grand Cayman. It would have been easier for their first time. Huh, so that's Tungsten. Thought it would be cooler. 
Whoa. The little dog will be there. <laughs> Under the spreading Coleman Francis, the village smithy stones. It says Viva Frog's Legs. <laughs> oh, man, don't tempt me. Mm. Is that the lunch wall or the dinner wall? I am the dark specter of food. I sensed there was mail. Rival Frog Lake place over there? Great, my Wall Street Journal. Oh, <laughs> gave myself a snuggie there. The frog Lake's gonna give it some. <laughs> I gotta get me a mechanical bull. <sighs> location, location, location. Just look at that curb appeal. for it <laughs> my name is death I'll be your waiter what can I do for you boys do you have any catfish coffee coffee coming up ah coffee a Coleman Francis motif the kitchen guy just died sorry my father was a can opener and my mother was a wood duck a pie doesn't make you want to kill yourself you want some <laughs> Who's playing that piano? That's my daughter. She's wed to the devil. <laughs> She's been blind, you know, since her husband got killed in the war. That makes sense. We got an omelet called Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Doctors have done everything for her. Tried glasses? No Spent all of my money. So we're going to put her down. Since that freeway went in, we lost all my business. I guess there's not much use trying. <sighs> May as well fold up and pull out. But I have my health and my spirits are high. We have a wonderful Oktoberfest frog leg. <laughs> Sitting in on Schiffero. <laughs> well, you see, they're just jealous. He was showing off over with his daughter in his ritzy restaurant and all. Woo! Surprisingly quick out of the blocks, this fellow. <laughs> okay, slow down. Speed up. Slow down. Oh. You and your swank restaurant and your chi-chi frog legs. <laughs> Suppose your boys will be wanting your check. Ow. Oh, we're going to have to ask you to leave if this continues. Ow. The apple's way is different than I remember. <laughs> Now, where in Cuba do you suppose they are? <laughs> Not the frog mine, no. <laughs> this is, I kind of like it. Center me up, boys. <laughs> Splash. <laughs> there. Now we had the rest of the day to ourselves. The legendary singing Buick. How are they going to get the car down the well? Check that junk box, see if it'll run. All right. I just keep thinking of those tasty frog legs. Ah, home of the famous steak a la Weissmeyer. The lure of the siren. I heartily endorse throwing her down a well. <laughs> hey, look, Tab Hunter lives here. What do you know? You know, the freeway may not be the problem. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Miss Channing. What's new? No, I'm not Carol Channing. Uh, oh, thank goodness, Mike. You must be feeling a little I'm bit... I'm T-Bone Burnett. Uh-huh. That's not right either. Hold on. I'm Vicki Lawrence. Uh, oh, then again, maybe I should just go lie down for a while. That's a great idea, yeah. honey. Bye -bye. You, you lie bye. down. It's the movie. Don't worry, bye -bye. okay? It'll be just fine. We better check on his nibs. Whoa, oh, yeah, right. It's a marshmallow world in the winter. No, those are my pants. 
Quickly down under. Help me. Help. There, Help. there, Dr. Oh. F. There, oh. there. Oh. Well, Mike, it's not looking good. I'm afraid we may be at the end. Frank. Yes? Frank. Yes, Dr. F? Frank. I'm right here, Dr. F. Frank. What? Frank. Yes, Dr. F. Frank. What? Frank, I'm going down a long hallway. There's a figure at the end beckoning to me. Well, don't you think you ought to go to him then, Doctor? Frank, there's something I always wanted to tell you. Look, let's not make a big production out of this. There's a guy down at the end of the hallway waiting for you, okay? Yes, he's tapping his foot and looking at his watch. Well, don't you think you ought to go to him then? Uh, uh, oh, Frank. Yes? This is it. I'm... Dead. And it is done. Dr. Clayton. No, wait. I'm alive. No, I'm dead. No? Yes. No? Now I'm dead. Wait. I'm still alive. No. I'm dead. Wait. I can't die. I've got too much to live for. I've got my good friend Frank. I've got things. I've things that I gotta do. I gotta live and laugh and love and live and embrace the world. I wanna live. Uh, Joe, hi. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, hurt. Oh! Oh! <laughs> doing better, honey? It still hurts. Should have had those frog legs. Yeah. Pull over. Get that top up. Coleman, you brat! <laughs> the Chinese fire drill. So, the frog legs were real good, huh, guys? This is cinema verite to the ultimate. You know, your everyday annoyances should not be filmed. Hey, guys, I'm going to change the tape, okay? 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 When we get this top up, we're going to drive back to Cuba and do it right this time. Ah. Uh -huh. Spend it at Cliff Weissmeyer's. <laughs> Thanks. That helps. I was getting cold. <laughs> oh, there's that new overpass I was telling you about. So the Cuban stuff, just a digression. Now the movie can really begin. <laughs> Remember when everyone started dressing like these guys? <laughs> Excuse me, is this the night train to Mundo Fina? <laughs> Carradine tracks, two, three days old. They've stumbled into the end of Mod Squad. Night train to Mundo Fina. Hey, 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 yeah. We're gonna let the air out of the tires. Hey, <laughs> there's a train moving out. Come on, man, let's grab the front end. Come on, Coco, let's go. What the hell? What was wrong with the car? We had a perfectly good car. So all this to get to the hobo gathering. Mm. Come on, Coco, come, come on. I bet they're going to pistol whip Thomas the tank engine. <laughs> this train is bound for glory, this train. Shaft did it better. I think the club car is up this way. Boy, this movie doesn't let up. Wow. The train riding sequence was omitted for clarity. Mm -hmm. hmm? I see this as a bed and breakfast. Can you see it? We need transportation. Yeah. And we're going to go legit. I'm going to open a Claire's I boutique. I bulls chasing me. And just give me the ring. That's my Archie fan club ring. I can't give you this ring. My dad gave it to me. I don't care if Moses gave it to you. Give me the ring. You're not gonna get it. 
<laughs> oh, hope that's a gun he pulled out. <laughs> ah! My neck got broken in that <laughs> jump cut. Well, see, the movie has finally thrown up its hands and said, I just don't know. I want to hurt this movie, but I can never hurt it the way it hurt me. Did they even need to go to Cuba? Yeah, I was lucky to pick up one of these rebuilt girls. Candy, take the groceries in the house. What house? The blue Chevy. Mm. Ah, my prize alternate. Yellow ribbon at the state fair. I think the location scout was a spaz. Mm. Hey, it's Dominic and Eugene and Curly. <laughs> I'm going to build my own artificial hip. Can I help you, fellas? Got something cheap? I have a nail I can sell you. <laughs> you mean it? Oh, Coleman, I'm touched. It's worth a few bucks. What's the hole in it for? What do you got that we can have? It's pretty. <laughs> I'm gonna look at it all day. It's shiny and stuff. Now, please, God, say the end, please. Oh. And now a trip to Uncle Bob's farm. Okay, okay, what plots need resolving? Well, there's the guy in the well. Uh, they gotta do something about Cuba. Mm. Another cheery Coleman Francis character. <laughs> The master says you can't stay here. I understand they did 70 takes of the window scene. We now return to In Cold Blood, the series. No, uh-uh, don't bring your movie here. No, get out, go! Oof, now it becomes a lighthearted domestic comedy. <laughs> uh, wanna buy a candy to send kids like us to Cuba? Yes. We're friends of your husband. My husband is Amanda Beers. You know Bailey. Sure, I put my face in his wound. We was with him in Cuba. Please, come in. And we're in. Mm -hmm. oh, my dinner party isn't going very well. I knew you wouldn't mind if I wore my teddy. I didn't want him to go. The Baileys wanted to go. Well, he had ideas. Bad ideas? He was headstrong, to say the least. Mm, you're headstrong. You have to be like you. Well, his green pants meant a lot to him. His green pants meant a lot to him? Mm -hmm. He felt he owed them for helping him through college. That's why we have a picture of Gene Pitney on the mantle. As I said, my husband. More coffee? As I said, he was alive, but I'm afraid our friend Bailey is dead. Yeah, it's a real tragedy. Anyway, pass the salt there, will you? To think that I was once Betty Boo. Billy told me to move out. Live in town till he returned. And then come back here till he leaves again. But this is my home. I live under the sink. It's been lonely here. His face a mask of sensitivity. But I couldn't leave. Mm -hmm. I wanted a nice home in town once. Well, no use letting that stuff up in the hills go to waste. Good point, uh, whoever said that. I don't know how much we owe on our place. Three or four dollars. We do some, I know that. I'd be willing to divide no. with no. you. If there's something <laughs> worth dividing. Have any idea where the mine is located? Up in the mountains. I was up there once. Yeah, that's nice. How long did Shimmy just show us? Maybe he won't come back. Will you move back into town then, or...? Never knew I would miss him so much. You never know how much you miss somebody till they leave you. I wanted to bring Bailey home. He couldn't make it. Well, it turns out he's a natural at grief counseling. If there's something up on that mountain worth having, we'll find it. No, oh, great. You have any more tuna helper, ma'am? <clears throat> we'll have to take plenty of water, food, Got a couple of shovels in the back. Anything else we may need? Uh, underpants? There's a Geiger counter here someplace. We'll check on that tomorrow. 
May as well get some rest. You men must be worn out. I'll get some quilts for you. It looks a lot like Cuba out here, but just ignore that. If I get the lawn chair next time. Uh, I think my life is finally coming together. Morning and Coleman just go together. The one who looks like Curly is so cute. Hey, mind if we sunbathe nude? <laughs> Mrs. Chastain, you sure cook fine vettles. Mm, I sure laugh. Everybody's having fun and smoking, and the dogs are eating too. <laughs> I feel good. Robbing people, killing people, hopping trains is fun. Bet she smells like Jack Del Rio's jackstrap. This is the last of the cat. Enjoy. <laughs> Lovely with a four sleigh right together with you. A huge, huge face! <laughs> I gotta pick up some wax worms. Just hear that sleigh bells ringing. I tell you, if my mood picks up anymore, I might not even kill myself. Are the pig's knuckles on the shelf all you have? You want a video? We got some super violent Asian triple X cartoons. That'll be 505. Outside the snow was pulling in. There's a coupon for free tanning on your receipt. Well, thanks for not killing me. Right neighborly of you. Okay, Coleman, we got Cheetos, but we're not opening them until later, understood? You get my lactate pills. So you can see that with the proper planning, you can make your car trip happy and successful. Hi, me! I like being on a stakeout with you, Max. <laughs> Even when it's bright, it's dark in this movie. Steve, yeah? Who are we? Take a look. The Gay High School Secret Service. I better contact Kelly. Do whatever you want. I gotta go to class. <laughs> Kelly, this is Steve. We spotted the future too. See? Right, Kelly. Ken, let's go. I talked to Kelly. Can't you just smell the tungsten? And they managed to find another beautiful location. Have you guys ever read The Total Filmmaker by Coleman Francis? Anybody want to do some peyote and fly over canyons? Is that the mountain? Well, let's kill that mountain. That's the mountain. Kelly, this is Tensley. The sheriff has a copter waiting at the airport. Okay, meet me at the airport in 10 minutes. Oh, Kelly commands such loyalty from his men. Okay. Well, that was a cul-de-sac, wasn't it? <laughs> it's Westworld now. Jim Baker. I'm Jolly Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys don't mind, I dress like an old-time sheriff. We have to call in the volunteer filmmaker squad to end the movie. Helicopter's over here waiting. Fine. Ready, Tensley? I think so. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so when does somebody run all the way to hell? Ho, oh, ho, ho, ho. Now step back and think, guys. Are we all going to fit in here? Jeez, I'm idiots. God. Yeah, I'm Kelly. I get a helicopter. I'm Kelly. I rule everybody. Can I ride with you, Tensley? Yeah, okay, sure. I think this is taking place in Mordor. <laughs> oh, how I long for Cuba. I just wanted to get out and look at the car again. I can't get enough of them opening the hood. Killed in Vietnam. Here, lick this. You're out of oil. 
Here, let me squeeze some out of my pants pocket. We better go back. Hmm? Oh, but we just got here. Or no go back. No go back. Hmm? Now, Coleman, now count to ten. So, they're not in Cuba anymore, right? Nothing's happening so fast. Maybe now would be a good time to put my hands on my knees and rotate. Ah. <laughs> oh, I wish I were less impulsive. I'm still going legit, though. Scotty, beam us up. A wild curly can hit 30 miles an hour when threatened. Yeah, looks like we caught us two with the tungsten trio. Epilogue. Somewhere behind that tree, there's a scene happening. <sighs> Please do not reveal the incredible secret of Red Zone Cuba. <laughs> oh, sorry. No camping here, ma'am. <laughs> I killed a cute widow rabbit. Why is Phil Silvers rounding up corpses? Ooh, just don't slam the tailgate too hard. The Gene Krupa band pulls into town. The Wherever This Is PD. Ah, Janet Reno's moving in to end the film. <laughs> Woodstock 3 draws a slim crowd. A male curly can run for hours on little water. Well, this is a really stupid use of a split screen. Native beaters are used to flush out the curly. Oh, look up there, it's Smelly Kelly and it's Helly. Uh, we're just as good as you, Kelly. Well, I see she bought more lawn ornaments. <laughs> Got a load of wife for you. They shouldn't have skimped on their privacy fence. <laughs> they hate ankles. Great job on the Bay of Pigs, honey. She's a little awkward to carry. You got a two-wheeler in the garage? Ow! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when Curly dies in the wild, he provides food for other Curlies. That was him, wasn't it? What the hell? The cast of How to Succeed in Business moves in. <laughs> the young, fresh fellows. Hard to love a character for so long and see him come to such an end. Mother of mercy, is this the end of Curly? Hey, he's got donuts in his pockets. Hmm? Griffin ran all the way to hell mm -hmm. with a penny and a broken cigarette. It's just really all you need in hell, so it works out great. Hmm. Huzzah, it's gone. Hmm. I thought they portrayed 1961 quite well. Yeah, not too hard <laughs> since they made it in 65. Oh, <laughs> oh. You know, aside from the fact that I'll never again experience joy in my life, I don't think Red Zone Cuba had any kind of negative effect on me. Yeah, even being Carol Channing didn't shield me from the effects of this one. Oh. Well, hey, I know what we can do to cheer ourselves up. What? Let's sing us a bouncy, upbeat song, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah. great idea. Hit it, Cambot! <laughs> Yay! Oh, whenever I want to cry and bawl because I'm feeling sad, yeah. I think of ironing boards and drywall, and then I don't feel so bad. Whenever I'm feeling down and blue and sorry for myself, 
ball. I get some staples and some glue, and I'm happy as an elf. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I start to mope and pout, and there's nothing left in my soul, I check the toilet paper, and if we're out, I buy another roll. Hey. Have you ever touched a post-it note? Have you ever looked at boots? Have you ever sat down in a chair? Have you ever used a paper clip? So if you listen to our advice, and you want to feel terrific, <laughs> do things that make you feel I wish we could be more specific. Ow! 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 Ow!